Welcome to another episode of My Point Three Garage. It's been a while. So uh, it's been six weeks since my last uh, video. My last video was setting up this tent to paint the Bronco. Uh, that was right at the beginning of this COVID thing and uh, my business blew up. And fortunately, uh, I've been more busy in the last six weeks than I've been in the last year, likely. Um, so now I'm getting to the point where, uh, in the middle of that, I also had a pretty significant injury to the to my uh, uh, to my right index finger. I'm right-handed, by the way, uh, which uh, in a lawn accident, uh, which uh, makes it very hard to do any uh, restoration or unrusted metals and stuff like that. Uh, trigger finger for the uh, uh, for the paint gun, uh, very difficult at that point too. But it's getting close. I'm getting to the point where I can almost bend it. So. Um, anyway, I was right in the middle of, of getting the Bronco finished sanded um, when I decided that while I was waiting for the, the perimeter dry, I would start working on the Wagoneer because the Wagoneer blew up. Uh, the Wagoneer I got from Copart uh, didn't, it was supposed to run and drive. It, it neither ran or drove when I received it um, off of the, the transport truck. and. Uh, I've been chasing and rebuilding the drivetrain from back to front since then. The only thing left is the transmission. I gotta figure out why this thing's not running. Um, and uh, in this video, I'm gonna do that. So uh, if you're only interested in Broncos, I'm sorry. Um, the Wagoneer has to run. Like I'm not, that's the only vehicle that I've bought that I'm not going to completely disassemble uh, down to the frame and start from scratch. I'm actually going to do the smart thing and I'm gonna get it driving and running and play with it uh, while I'm getting the Broncos done. And then once the Broncos are done, then I'll start working on that a little bit, but I'm still not gonna blow that thing apart. I don't know that I'm ever gonna blow a car apart again. Uh, way too much work, uh, way too much time for someone who works a lot. Um, so anyway, I found out what the, the actual reason why the Wagoneer won't run in this episode, so watch it. It is nasty. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. I'm actually gonna try to get the Wagoneer um, up and running. So for those of you who don't know, I got this from Copart, and uh, this is over a year ago now. And uh, it was supposed to run and drive, and uh, when it got here, I found out that it would not drive. It would run, but it wouldn't go forward. It would only go in reverse, and it would go in reverse reluctantly. So uh, looking underneath, quickly determined that the transfer case was blown to pieces, giant chunks of it, holes in the bottom. Um, and so I pulled it down, ordered a second half, ordered a replacement half for it, rebuilt it. Uh, the viscous clutch was blown up inside of it. So I pinned the viscous clutch as well. Um, and then reassembled it. So needless to say, this transfer case is Frankenstein significantly. With that viscous clutch being pinned, theoretically, it's full-time four-wheel drive in four-wheel drive mode. There's no uh, all-wheel drive or limited slip or whatever it is um, that's in there. When it's in four-wheel drive, it's locked four-wheel drive, uh, which I'm, I'm okay with because I'm gonna drive it two-wheel drive most of the time anyway right now. Um, but then after I finish that, uh, it still will not go forward. So I don't think it's the transfer case now, even though that had to be rebuilt. Uh, I think it's the transmission. So I ordered a transmission rebuild kit over a year ago and I haven't put it in yet. Today, I'm gonna start that process. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna pull the transfer case out. And then this, this is, so this is what I'm thinking because I'm, I'm trying to do this in pieces. Um, I'm gonna pull the transfer case out and then I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna shift into um, drive and see if the output shaft um, spins. Put some pressure on it and see if it slows it down any, just to make sure there isn't anything else, because this only has 110,000 miles on it. And I know 110,000 miles back in 1983 is different than 110,000 miles now. I can't imagine the transmission is so bad that it won't go in forward at all. So. Um, I've checked the transmission fluid in it. Transmission fluid is at the correct level. Um, I've checked for leaks or transmissions leaking, but they all do. I've adjusted the bands um, to see if that could, if that made a difference in it, and it didn't. So the only thing I think now is that um, I've, I've just lost my clutches inside of it. So, uh, so we're gonna pull the transfer case out now and then put it in a drive and see if the output shaft is even turning. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so that's out. Now we're gonna start this thing and see if it will, uh, if it'll go in forward without the transfer case. Meaning, see if I can get the output shaft to to spin. Switch that up. Ready for the test? All right, first we're gonna put it into reverse and get, give it some gas about half throttle, and then pull off, and then put it in drive, give it about ha uh, half throttle, and then let off, okay? Okay, go ahead, reverse. A little bit more. Okay, stop. Now put it into drive. Give it some gas. Yep, 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 it needs a rebuild. All right, well that was easy. It is definitely not the transfer case. As you can see, the transfer case, after the rebuild was smooth as butter, so it's definitely not the transfer case, it is definitely the transmission. So let's go pull the transmission out. So, this is a problem. So something, either we lost gearing in there, smashed it to pieces, or, uh, or these are the clutch plates that have dissolved. So we won't know until we get in there and look, but that's the reason why this thing won't shift. Nasty. All right, let's pull the rest of the transmission. There we go. It's too late. All the fluids all over the ground, but there she is. She gave birth to a Torque Flight 727, a broken one. So now I got to clean up that darn mess. Now we got her broken apart, and uh, it's time to uh, get her fixed. Let's head on inside. And start the process. Nice. Woo! All right, this thing is ready to come apart now. Let's get her done. So I hope that it's just the uh, the, the clutches and uh, and the uh, what are those called pressure plates. Yeah, I hope that's what that is, and it's not something else. But we're gonna find out really quick. Um, but once I get this rebuilt, I've already rebuilt the transfer case and pinned the clutches, uh, which I will show you uh, how I did that um, to bypass the viscous coupler. Rebuild it's all I want to do. I just want to rebuild it, but I can't find any paper towels. Picked the wrong time to run out of paper towels during a pandemic. Got him. Good. problem is that is where the problem is I don't know exactly what that is yet but I'm gonna find out looks like it's this uh, yeah you can see how loose that is right there it's the spider gear carrier how hard is that to get Look at that, just absolutely annihilated.
And then if you look inside of here, the whole carrier is just completely destroyed. Just wasted. So that's it. So the planetary gears, planetary gears are what, what got smoked. All right, so I'm gonna see what we can do to maybe find another one of these and we'll go from there. I can probably just pull this out and Wow, just amazing. Well, at least we know what killed this Wagoneer. So this guy right here, just uh, gone. If anybody knows why a, planet, a front planetary gear would explode like this, put it in the comments. I heard, I've read that the uh, 727 has a problem with quick shifts from reverse into drive or reverse into park or is it it's reverse into drive um, has a problem with reverse into drive and uh, so like for instance if you're rocking your way out of snow or something like that and you do it quick it'll actually blow the seals out inside the transmission and cause damage but I don't know what damage so I don't know if this uh, Wagoneer came from Massachusetts so possibly it could have been snow or something but if anybody else has seen this and have anything that they want to uh, Put down in the comments as to why it might have happened. I would appreciate it. Got another one coming. Uh, 40 bucks on uh, eBay. Hopefully it's the same one. And uh, I'm going to try to save this annulus gear. Even though it's caked with aluminum. I'm just going to kind of clean it out. And see if I can get it to work. Otherwise I'll buy another one of those. Uh, continue with the rebuild. So that uh, the transmission is fresh. And uh, when I put it back in. We shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, and uh, get it up and running. So uh, while we're waiting on parts for this, we're going to continue to work on the Bronco and get it even that much closer to paint. Um, and then we're just going to run forward. So please subscribe. And uh, that's a wrap for Mod Point 3 Garage. We'll see you on the next video.